Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and I want to give you a chance to get logged in or or tuned in to the Facebook live stream. Also, those of you that will be clicking on to the webinar and watching uh, by the YouTube link or you're already in the chat room. So we appreciate all of you joining us. Uh, today is very important because we are continuing rightly dividing truth concerning healing truths revealed. We're talking about healing. Healing is a hot topic. It's a hot topic for those who believe, and it's really an important topic for those who do not believe. So we're going to continue our lessons on healing truths revealed. So I hope you're getting hooked up with this, uh, whether at the beginning or midstream or however it is you're getting uh, tuned in with me, uh, please get hooked up and get tuned into these lessons. We're talking about Rightly Dividing Truth. This is World Bible School. This is one of our free classes. And in this class, we're going to discover the truth about healing by looking at what God's word says. And if we discover what the Bible says, then in essence, we will discover what God thinks. Now, to some people, it's not important what God thinks, but there are many people who have found it to be an important issue for them to know what God thinks. So we will be looking at many familiar scriptures, as I said last time, and see what Holy Spirit wants to point out to us about them. So let's get started today. Today we're going to go to Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. One of my favorite scriptures in the Old Testament, Exodus 15 and verse 26. So I hope you're hooking up with me here and joining me in this lesson today. Now, in Exodus 15, 26, it says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, Give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. A very important verse of scripture in our Bible history. Not only is it an important verse of scripture, not only is it a piece of history, but this is the first time that God made a healing covenant with mankind, which I will mention again as we go along. The thing that I want you to realize in this verse of scripture is God does not deal with people today like he did in the Old Testament. He does not view people the way that they were viewed in the Old Testament uh, concerning how he sees us after the cross. And so even though this appears that God brought diseases on the Egyptians, the reality is, is that it was disobedience that brought uh, uh, these diseases on the Egyptians. But keep in mind this, this last phrase, he says, for I am the Lord who heals you. Keep in mind that you are not the sick trying to get healed. You are healed because God said so. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. My body is sick. I don't feel very good. Well, that's a good thing for you in the sense that I'm going to be ministering to people prophetically uh, by, by the gifts of the Spirit at the close of this broadcast and praying for you. But you are not the sick. Get, trying to get healed. This is the way God views you. You are healed because and only because God said so. So I hope that today you can begin to see yourself the way God sees you because God does not see you as the sick. God sees you as the healed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're glad all of you are joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, thank you for putting your name and your, uh, or, or at least where you're from uh, in the chat there and letting me know how many's watching today. Now, uh, it, I used to say this, that, 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 that you are the heel resisting every temptation of sickness. And it's true. We do resist every early sign of sickness in our bodies by refusing to accept whatever's going on. You know, oftentimes what people will do is they'll begin to feel symptoms like watery eyes or a sore throat or a runny nose or a little bit of congestion. There's the first signs of, of symptoms and they immediately will say, I believe I'm getting sick or I believe I'm getting the flu. And the truth is, those may be the beginning warning signs, but the reality is, is that that does not mean that you have the sickness. That means that you have what? 
you have the symptoms. And symptoms are the temptation to accept or to embrace that which is coming next. So you don't have to embrace the symptoms. You can embrace what God says. So God does not see you as the sick trying to get healed. God sees you as healed. And so that's why I make that statement. Now, we resist sickness by faith in the finished work that Jesus has completed for us. He finished it all for you. If he says in that by his stripes you were healed, past tense, you have been healed, then you need to embrace that truth. Therefore, the greater truth, and, and listen to this, one can see yourself as healed even if your body does not say so. Keep this in mind. You can see yourself as sick, but believing that you are getting well. See, the problem with this theology is that it is based on how a person sees truth. Sometimes for people, it's based on how you feel. So if you feel sick, then you believe you're sick. But in reality, you're simply healed because God said so in his word. So again, uh, you can see yourself as healed, even though your body says you're sick, because the greater truth will always be what God says above that uh, of what the witness of your body says. Now, you got to believe the witness of your body or believe the, the witness of God's word. So you get to choose. You can't choose both, but you get to choose. All right. Now, keep in mind that our God is a healing God and it is God's will for you to be healed. And it will always be God's will for you to be healed, healthy and whole. That is God's will. It's never going to change. Sickness is not your friend. Listen to me. Sickness is not your friend. Sickness is not your pal. Sickness does not like you. Sickness has a mission, and that mission is not for anything good. And I'm going to explain that to you as we go along today. Sickness is not your friend, but sickness does have a mission. And here's the mission. It's to destroy you. I'm going to show you how that works. All right. First of all, uh, let, let, next, let's go to Psalm 107, verse 20. I hope you're taking notes today and you'll review these scriptures later unless you're fast at turning or you're on a computer or, or a tablet or something where you can view them. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word and healed them. See, what we need to understand today is that, that God sends a healing word to you and he delivers you through through from every destruction. God sends a healing word to you. And how he sent that healing word is very important. God sent that healing word every time Jesus took a stripe upon his back a healing word came to you. God released a healing word through the stripes of Jesus. The faith to believe that you are healed comes by receiving or embracing every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jesus, who is the living word. You understand that Jesus is the living word. So embrace Jesus today. Embrace truths that you've never embraced before. Listen to me. If sickness runs rampant in your life, is if lack runs rampant in your life, if problems run rampant in your marriage or in your family or in your church, listen to me, preacher, man and woman of God, then I want to encourage you to, to realize that what you are believing is good, but it's not all that there is to believe. There's more revelation out there. And so you can begin to expand your horizons by finding out those truths or listening to broadcasts like this. Not that I know everything because I don't, but what I'm teaching to you, it has an intention or a mission also, which is to take you up another level in your believing. The Bible said in Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 said to, to seek those things that are above or to set your affection on things above. The word above there is not talking above in heaven. The word above there means to come up to another level of thinking. And God wants you to think differently today so that you can begin to see victory, the victory that Jesus actually won for you at the cross. The, the faith of God in you, listen to me, the faith of God in you, the faith in you is not your faith, it's the faith of God. And I don't have time to do a teaching on the faith of God. I've done many webinars on the faith of God. But the faith of God was deposited in you. Uh, and the reality is, is that 
faith is the same creative force that God had in the beginning when he said, let light be and light was. But that, that faith in you and then what you have is a belief system. You have the ability to believe in what the faith of God can do, what God in you, what Christ in you can do, or to reject that. The, the faith of God in you always reaches into the past where Jesus took stripes for your healing and brings it forward into your present reality. But the way it happens is first because it is a spiritual truth. Secondly, it is based on what you believe. Now, if you believe it is not true, it will not change the fact. Listen, if you say that healing does not belong to us, it will not change the fact that Jesus took stripes upon his back and he released healing to the world. Uh, the reality is this, that there is a statement that says, if God said it, that settles it. And I believe that. It, is, it has been proven that unbelief can hinder what God has done for you. And so if God says it, that settles it. And listen, the fact that your Bible is filled with the truths of God's word of, of God will never change. It will still be a settled fact when you believe in the settled works of God, the words of the Lord then they, they, they have a personal impact on you. Then it becomes truth that if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. So the fact that God said something is a settled fact. But how you, what your participation is, is to believe what God says. Now, again, faith reaches back to the finished work of Jesus. Okay, I wasn't there, you wasn't there, but faith reaches back so that you can access what Jesus did. So healing was back at the cross, back just prior to the cross when Jesus took stripes upon his back, about 33 to 35 AD, uh, 30 to 33 AD. And so faith reaches back to that time and says, yes, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And faith brings it forward into your present life. It brings all of the benefits of Jesus into your life today, which is why God provided deliverance from sickness and from disease and why he sent his word to deliver mankind from the destruction that affliction brings. So once again, healing is a part of God's redemptive nature. Now, every person really needs to get this truth into your thinking. What, what And the, the truth is that you were not only redeemed from sin, but you were also redeemed from sickness. Let me say that again. You need to get this truth in you that you were not only redeemed from sin, but you were also redeemed from sickness. Now, let's go back, and I'll give you a moment to find this. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 6. <coughs> Let's look at Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 6. All right, here's what it says. Who has believed our report? Who has believed our goings on? The things we do, the things we say, the things we, the, we believe. Who has believed what's coming out of your mouth? Who has believed what's coming out of your life? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as the root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That's not you. That's Jesus. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. This is talking about the, the attitude of a, a, a nation of people who did not receive Jesus as the Messiah, even when he came uh, and, and, and appeared on planet Earth. And we hid our faces, as it were, our faces from him. We despised him, and we did esteem him. Uh, we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. 
yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. That's the opinion of mankind many times at one point in time, and even still today, many have the opinion that God did that to Jesus, and the things you're going through, people think God did that to you. But notice this, there is a but here in verse 5 that says, but the tide is changing, but there is a different view. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And then verse 6 says, And all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord, Father God, has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. Now, there's a lot in these six verses of scripture. I can't teach it in its entirety today because it all doesn't pertain to this lesson, uh, uh, but, but it is a passage that shows context. It shows consistency. And what we need to see here is that there have been times where we did not flow the way the word and the will of God is. For example, about healing. There are times that people said, you know what? I don't believe in this healing. Why? Because my body's sick, so I can't possibly be healed. But what you see in this single dimension of the fleshly realm and what you understand with your unrenewed mind is that sickness is present. But don't base your entire life what you perceive in this natural realm. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the things that are perceived by the senses are are uh, temporal, but the things that are not perceived by the senses, and I'm reading the Greek language, I'm speaking the Greek language to you, the things that are not perceived by the senses are eternal. So in other words, what you can perceive by your physical senses are temporary. Even sickness is temporary. There are people who die with sickness because they believe in sickness. There are people who die with sickness because they don't put up a fight to prevent what what's going on and believe what Jesus has done for you. But then there are those who say, I also am a spiritual being. And listen to me, people, you are more spiritual than you are natural. The reality is, is that your spirit and your soul live in a supernatural realm. Yes, they're on the inside of your body, but they live in your in a spiritual realm. And in that realm, there is healing and wholeness and all the provision of what God has done in Christ for you. Now, whatever was done at the hill called Calvary was done for everyone in the world. Hear this today, preacher. Hear this today, man and woman of God. Hear this today, Christian that's listening to me. Stop judging the world. God sent his son because he loved the world. He sent his son to die for the world at one point in time, which you were also. You were on the outside looking in, but God has brought you in and he's did, he did this work for everyone. What Jesus did on the cross is a completed work and it cannot be undone. Yet even many Christians only acknowledge that, that God forgave the sins, our sins at the cross. Many do not understand that the sacrifice of Jesus also covered healing for our bodily illnesses. Oh my goodness. Your bodily illnesses have been covered at the cross. In your salvation package, you have the Greek word sozo and soteria. But sozo and soteria are words that have a multiplicity of of uh, content in them. When you receive salvation, you not only receive Jesus, you not only receive forgiveness of sins, but you receive uh, uh, prosperity, uh, 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 um, protection, long life, wholeness. You receive healing. And you receive deliverance. All of those things came the moment you received Jesus. But let me ask you a question. Was there ever a time when you didn't feel saved? You didn't feel delivered, yet you knew that you had been saved? There's people that go up and down in their Christian experience because they don't understand that what they received at the cross is permanent. In other words, that the devil can't take it away from you. A lie from the enemy can't take it away from you. 
you. A lie from your best friend or from your family can't take it away from you. When you receive Jesus, you received everything that he is. And so I think that because people experience sickness, many have taken a casual attitude toward it instead of saying, look, I have this because God gave this to me. I mean, it's like some have come to believe in the existence uh, in the existence of sickness. So why fight it? Well, let me just tell you, you, you may seem to avoid sin, even though it didn't uh, it, it, it does exist. There is sin still today. There is a curse still today on those who believe in it. But Jesus became the curse for us so we wouldn't have to have a curse on us. Jesus became sin for us so we wouldn't have to have sin on us. And he became sickness so that we wouldn't have to have sickness on us. And so the reality is, is what Jesus came to do was to destroy the controlling power of sickness, the controlling power of sickness, uh, of sin, sickness, and disease over you. Amen. So at the cross, the Bible teaches us that God provided forgiveness of sin, but also for the healing of our bodies if they do get sick. So just because there's sickness in the world is no reason to cave into sickness, just like there is sin in the world and there's no reason for you to cave into it. I mean, where you live, down the road, there might be someone, a family that lives there that sins continuously. Is that a reason for you to sin just because sin exists down the road? Absolutely not. Well, just because sickness tries to come into your, uh, uh, even if that sin tries to come into your household, you resist it, you put up a fight. But let me ask you a question. What if sickness tries to enter your household? Are you just going to lay there and take it or are you going to put up a fight? See, both sin and sickness were paid for in full by Jesus Christ, and he conquered it all for you and me at Calvary. When Jesus suffered on the cross, he, was, he literally carried our sickness in his own body as well as the payment for all of our iniquities. Many Bible translations record Isaiah 53, 4 as saying, surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. But the original Hebrew words here for griefs and sorrows are translated as sicknesses or sickness and pains everywhere else in the Old Testament. Only in Isaiah 53 are they translated griefs and sorrows in the English language. So if we were to translate this verse more accurately, it would read, surely our sickness he himself bore and our pain he carried. So even uh, the pain that can accompany certain sicknesses or diseases, he also carried that for you. All right, let's look now at Matthew chapter 8, uh, which speaks about Isaiah's prophecy. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and he did some more he not only delivered those who were demon possessed but he healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying he himself took our infirmities or our sickness and he bore our sicknesses or our pains so Matthew obviously understood Isaiah's prophecy in the literal sense. When the prophet spoke of Jesus bearing our sickness, he referred to physical ailments, not any form of spiritual ailment. He, you, when there is sickness, it is not spiritual in the sense of it being something from God or something in your spirit. And by the way, your, you, can, you can be spiritually uh, attacked or, or sick in some forms, but your spirit itself does not get sick. Your spirit itself is whole, created by God, will not do, uh, will not be anything different. Okay, so Jesus clearly paid the price for our healing. Now, there are two conclusions we can draw from this fact, and I want to share those with you now. Number one, healing is God's will for all. I want you to say that where you are right now. Just say healing is God's will for all. Stop judging people and saying that healing does not belong to them. Stop going to sinners and telling them, if you'll just get saved, then God will heal you. 
Why don't you just speak the word of the Lord over them and cast out those spirits with a word and heal them and then they will give their heart to Jesus. It doesn't matter what religion they are. It doesn't matter what their belief systems are. Get them healed and they will come to Jesus. So whatever was purchased at Calvary is offered universally and without exception. God offers healing and health to every person in the world. The only responsibility you have and I have is to believe what the Bible says. The truth is that every person must come into agreement with God, which means to believe that healing, uh, that healing is for you, that healing for you is absolutely God's will for you to be healed. It's absolutely God's will to be healed. Also, healing is one of the things Jesus paid for with his very own life, with his very own blood, with his very own body so that we would have a benefit from his sacrifice and that all uh, that is required is for you to make up your mind to believe what God says. And that brings me to point number two. Healing is a sure and steadfast provision of the new covenant. Listen, God did not send his son, Jesus Christ, to do an incomplete work at the cross. You might be looking at your body and at your life right now and saying, what Jesus did must be incomplete because my body is very sick. No, Jesus finished every part of the sacrifice which was required for the healing of your body. But the devil is one who wants to keep you sick. He's the one who wants to keep you defeated. He's the one that wants to keep you out of commission. And But it is God's will uh, and, and it is God who wants you completely healed for his own glory. Hallelujah. The devil cannot take it from us, uh, cannot take from us what Jesus provided for us unless you get into unbelief. Now, this is the state where I find many people is in unbelief. Well, I think God might heal me or I wish God would heal me or I would really like for God to heal me. What you're saying is, is I don't believe I'm healed. I believe and I hope that one day I will be healed. But what that's called in scripture in the book of Proverbs uh, goes like this, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. So I don't have hope that I'm going to be healed one day. I have hope. Hope, Bible hope is confident expectation of good. So I constantly expect good. I expect an increase in my health. I expect an increase in my finances. I expect an increase of blessing. I expect an increase of wisdom. I expect an increase of all that God has to, to uh, evolve in, in me. And so you need to expect, don't put off hope till tomorrow. Don't put off hope till to someday. Uh, God will never remove his provision from you. So put your faith in what Jesus has done for you today. Now, remember that Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord who heals you. And this is important because, as I said in the beginning, that I was going to mention it again, this was the first healing covenant ever made uh, by God with mankind. Uh, this was the first healing covenant, the first covenant, actually, and it was a healing covenant. That is so important. The first covenant God made with man was a healing covenant. Now, here's the big question that I want to get to today. And that is, how do we access this promise of healing for our bodies today? Well, one scripture I want to give you real quickly is Mark chapter 11, verse 24. That says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So when you ask God for something in prayer, it is essential, according to the scripture, it is essential that you believe what you just prayed. So what did you pray? First of all, you must make sure that your prayer is in alignment with God's word. I think that's important. Uh, be Make sure that what you pray, I, oftentimes what I do is I pray scriptures because I know that scriptures will be pretty much in alignment with the will of God. And so I pray the word. But make sure that you pray according to the word of God. And the Bible says that it will come to pass. He says, you will have them 
uh, if, if, that believe that you receive them and you will have them. In the original language, it looks like the word them uh, is is omitted. So the scripture would actually read that whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have. How important is that? Believe you receive and you will have. Okay, now, once you believe and receive or accept what God has said, then the Bible says you will have whatever you ask for. Everything starts with you believing what God has said. Let me say that again. That's an important statement. Everything starts with you believing what God has said. And I'm going to post that on Facebook just as quickly as I can, because that's a very, very important statement for us to to uh, to believe, to realize. OK, now. The only way for a promise of God not to work is if a person stops believing and doubts that they are true. So if God says healing belongs to you, then you must believe that it is true. Amen. Amen. OK. Now, here's some important things for you to consider. I, I just want to go through this list of questions and uh, four questions and, and just present this to you as we come near a close today in our lesson. But I want you to hear these things. Number one, it is God's will for Is it God's will? Think about this because some of you believe that God wants you to suffer. Is it God's will for you to suffer with anything in your body since Jesus already took our suffering on the cross? Does God want you to suffer? You know, I know the Bible says things like if we suffer with him, but you don't understand what that's talking about because, again, we're dealing with an imperfect language and we have to go back to the original language and uh, and and view it from there. And I'm not teaching on that today. But the reality is I'm just throwing this question out there. Do you believe it's God's will for you to suffer since Jesus already took your suffering on the cross? That would say to me that since Jesus took your suffering, you don't have to suffer. So it's time to stop putting up with suffering. All right. Then number two. How would you explain to someone else who felt like sickness was their cross to bear in life, enabling them to give glory to God? How would you explain to them that the cross God gives you is not to be sick? Your cross to bear is to take up his ministry, take up his ministry and start doing what he did with other people. Uh, so it's important for you to think about how you would explain that. Number three. What scriptures would you use to show someone else that healing was God's promise for them simply based on what Jesus has already suffered? What scriptures would you use? Are you going to tell people they're supposed to suffer for the glory of God? Or are you going to tell them they're supposed to be healed for the glory of God? Because both things are, a, the two things are a contradiction and God is not a contradictory individual. And so it's important that you understand that God wants you healed and God wants you whole. So how would you explain that to others? What scriptures would you use? All right. Number four, when Matthew 8, 17 said he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, both took and bore actually come from the same root words. And this could say he took our infirmities and he took our sicknesses. Do you believe this verse settles healing in your own life? The issue of healing, is it settled in your own life that Jesus already took your infirmities and took your sicknesses at the cross? Do you believe that becomes that healing is now a settled issue for you? If it's not, I want you to stay with me next week and the week after and the week after and the week after as we keep hammering on this subject of rightly dividing truth about healing. Just keep in mind that you are not the sick trying to get healed, but you are the healed because God said so. For me, that's all I need is because God said so. You say, Dr. Bill, is there ever a fight? Listen to me. There's always a fight. When sickness tries to come in, I go to battle with, I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I'm the healed because God said so. You need to make it a point to, to that when you're dealing with lack, that you go to God and say, I'm not the poor trying to get blessed. I'm the blessed because God says so, that God supplies all of your need. So as we continue this study, we, we will consider the following questions during the course of this, this series of classes. Number one, what is healing? We will look at is healing God's will. And we're going to look at scriptures that say whether it is or is not. 
is biblical healing still for us today? How can we prove that? Because people, believe, many people believe that healing went out the window when the Bible was uh, completed. Um, is there sickness in heaven? So we want to explain what is heaven? Is there any sickness there? What does the Bible say about it? And then lastly, we will talk about how can I be healed? So at, at last time, as we begin to talk about the source of sickness, and we'll do this periodically throughout these lessons, we looked at Acts 10, 38. I want to give this as a closing scripture today. And it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. So we saw last time that from this verse, sickness is a curse from the devil who is an enemy of God and an enemy of man. The devil is not your friend. Satan is not your friend. He is not your pal. He is the enemy of everything that God stands for. So this is exactly how Jesus looked at sickness. He saw it as a curse upon mankind. So he became the curse for us. Jesus viewed sickness as oppression from the devil. Sickness is oppressing. Sickness came to destroy you, to bring destruction. But every time sickness is in your body, it eats away at your immune system, trying to wear you down so that one day you will die. But, you know, the reality is, is God sent Jesus to take stripes on his back for your healing. So we must understand that God's desire is to set people free from the bondage of everything that the enemy tries to bring on people. Uh, God desires all mankind to be saved and live for him. Isn't that right? Well, God desires all mankind to be healed from every illness in the world. Now, can you believe that? You believe that God wants you to be free from sin. He wants people saved. But can you believe that God wants you healed and free from every illness? Why is that? Because God is not the creator of sickness. God did not create sickness. Chris, sickness is a perversion of the truth of God's word. A perversion. It's an opposite of, of the truth of God. And sickness is the opposite of health. So God wants you whole. He wants you healed. So today, this is the day that God wants to manifest healing and wholeness in you. He does not want you to suffer affliction, which is why he became Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. When God declared himself the God whose name is healer, he was revealing once, uh, he was revealing uh, once, uh, uh, once and for all, his unchangeable attributes of his character in you. Father God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to take stripes upon his back to solidify or which means to freeze every promise he made in this world so that you might be healed. He sent Jesus to solidify, solidify, to to freeze every promise. In other words, his promises cannot be undone. His promises cannot be undone. Let me say that to you again. His promises cannot be undone. Why? Because they are his promises. Amen? Okay. Now, I want to say this to you. Right now, I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray for those that are listening and those that may be watching this video replay later on. And I want to say something to you right now. I want to say that God loves you so much that he provided healing. And I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to release healing to you in the name of Jesus. One day there was a pastor watching and both of his knees were bothering him. And his heel, he, he, knees were healed instantly. I want to tell you that God wants you healed and whole. In the name of Jesus, someone has a right ankle that's bothering them. And I just speak healing to that ankle in the name of Jesus. Healing in Jesus name. The pain is going away. The stiffness and soreness is going away right now in Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. 
I thank you, Lord, for healing my brothers and sisters. Headache pain is leaving someone right now in Jesus' name. It might be sinuses. It might be a migraine. But right now, headache pain is leaving you healing, manifesting in your body right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Someone dealing with neck pain. Uh, it, it is suspected that there's a vertebrae out of place right now, Holy Spirit. I just thank you for pushing that vertebrae back into place right now. You, you may even hear it pop right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, that vertebrae is going back into place. Thank you, Father, that all pain is leaving your body in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just speak to your heart. I speak to the valves in your heart. Someone right now is concerned about you might be having a heart attack or this may have been a process that's going on. You have not been to the doctor. You have not had it checked out yet, but you've been concerned about it. And I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus, every valve, every artery, can, can, uh, every joining artery in the name of Jesus to be unclogged, every valve to open and close as it should. I speak healing and restoration to your heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for healing my, my, my brothers and sisters right now. These words that I'm given could be for one person or could be for several people. And so receive. Receive from this healing flow right now. Upset stomach in your upper diaphragm, uh, just, just bloated and, and hurting and pressure right up to the solar plexus area. And in the name of Jesus, I speak a release for you in Jesus' name. Healing right now. That pain is leaving and that, that and someone else that not you have been concerned about in your stomach area in Jesus name. Just put your hand on that knot right now. I command that growth, that gorder, that that not gorder, but that that growth, that knot to disappear. You can feel it right now in your hand that it's going down, it's disappearing in the name of Jesus. Someone else I, I, I heard recently, I don't know if you're watching today, had a goiter, a growth on your neck. I command that to leave in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for healing. I command that growth to leave and for that thing to dry up and dissolve in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that all the pain associated with it is leaving. All the nerves in that area unhindered, untouched in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for healing and wholeness right now. I bless you, Lord. I glorify you. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, we give you praise for what you've done. Thank you, Father God, that if people write in on the YouTube channel, I'll be posting this video in about an hour, or if they comment on the Facebook page. Father, I thank you that people are being healed right now by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah that the stripes of Jesus paid it forward so that we can have healing in our bodies today right here in this earth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I speak healing to sore throats in Jesus' name. I command when you swallow, soreness leaving right now in Jesus' name. I, I speak to someone with a, a, a clog in your ear canal. You know, this happens regularly, whether it's the right or the left or both. Uh, I, I just speak right now in Jesus' name, in the left ear canal. I command that to open up in Jesus' name. Uh, someone just heard a pop. Uh, that opened up and it popped and you're, you're able to just cover your right ear. Uh, you're able to hear uh, uh, very well out of that left ear. And, and, and you can receive that word for the right ear and uh, the same experience. I thank you, Father God, right now for healing and wholeness in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope that you were blessed today by this, this class, by this teaching. I, I want to thank you for watching this lesson. And I hope that you've learned something that will start you on a path of believing of what God says about healing. You're not the sick trying to get healed. You're the healed because God says so. Join me next time for another episode of Rightly Dividing Truth because knowing truth will set you free and keep you free. Amen. God bless you. 
I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.